Thank you very much for joining me on this Saturday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields watching Lee, and I want to get into what could develop behind it. There's another system that may try to develop, which is common for this time of year. Tomorrow is the peak of the hurricane season, so it's normal to be active, but I want to track everything for you best I can, all on track from overnight. With one exception, it has slowed. I talked a little bit about this yesterday. It is really going to slow down, almost stall out before it turns to the north, and when systems slow or stall out, I keep a very close eye on any changes, because sometimes that could shift a few things, depending on the front back to the west. We'll get into that. But you see the track that has been very much locked in. The intensity though is down. When it comes to hurricane forecasting, track forecasting is a lot better than intensity forecasting. Uh, uh, trying to forecast the intensity of these things and we've seen them over the last few years go from nothing to something in a hurry. Uh, it's tough. That is very difficult. Looking at the computer models as far as that track is concerned, all in very, very good and strong agreement. Few of the models were hinting a little bit more off to the west. Here's Puerto Rico, Turks and Caicos here. Here's Bermuda, but overnight, again, everything has really gelled for almost that right-hand uh, curve. You see that right there, almost a direct right-hand turn eventually, lifting up to the north, putting the core of this system off to the west of Bermuda later in the upcoming week, and I'll dive into that. And then down the road, anywhere from New England, northeastern United States, back to the Atlantic uh, region of Canada, watching this very closely, again, for late week in the upcoming weekend, so about a week from now. Looking at the kind of current conditions, the environment, the atmosphere, what's going on, where it is now, it is going to eventually lift up to the north into some cooler water. So even if this becomes a Category 4 again, which is possible, once it lifts to the north, it won't be in that same fashion. You see Bermuda here, and you see these water temperatures, 26 degrees uh, Celsius, 26, 27. That's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's kind of marginal. Point being, cooler water eventually ahead once it makes its turn to the north, which is good. Now, over the last 24 hours, this has been a change. There's been a lot of wind shear. Wind shear is a very, very good thing. Here's the system here. You see the brighter colors. I know this map is a little bit crazy. These brighter colors are showing the wind shear and winds coming in out of the southwest way up high. So what wind shear does is, in a hurricane or a tropical storm, as the uh, storms within try to build up, will you get wind shear. Winds coming from the opposite direction and it just knocks off uh, some of the tops of the thunderstorms so it can't get as strong or it weakens the system. That's a very good thing and that's what we've been dealing with in the short term. Now, again, monitoring this closely, Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, all the way back through Anguilla, watching for any changes, especially as it slows. Bermuda, we're on high alert. This will be very close late week. The key, of course, will be when does it make that turn? Now, Turks and Caicos, I was just checking in at the latest runs of the model, the latest information the most recent models. The American model and the European model both have this staying about 300 miles or 480 kilometers off to the east. So 480 kilometers being off to the east, that is a safe distance. That keeps the hurricane and tropical storm conditions off to the east. With that said, I am watching, and I can't stress that enough, when it slows, sometimes it could kind of wobble and shift a little bit closer. So Turks and Caicos, keep an eye on Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, just in case it kind of shifts a little bit more when it slows down. It doesn't have a lot of steering when it slows, so it could kind of wobble in one direction or another. Kind of doesn't know where it wants to go. Now, Bermuda down the road, Late this week, I do expect at least some impacts. As it stands right now, the Europe, the timing's off because it's going to slow, and when does it take its turn? The European model has this to the west, the core of this to the west of Bermuda on Saturday. The American model has this, same thing, same track, to the west of Bermuda, the core of it, uh, on Thursday into Friday, so sooner. So heads up there, at least on the current heading, that would give us some tropical storm conditions in Bermuda, some of the gusty winds, of course, high seas could be issues with power outages. Any more of a shift off closer to Bermuda would be a big concern because the east side of a tropical system, tropical storm or hurricane is the worst side. That's where you have the core of the winds. You, The winds uh, kind of, uh, there's an additive uh, effect because the motion of the storms this way, the winds are coming this way. So again, some of the strongest winds are on the east side of a system and that's what I'm watching. So to give you that kind of time frame for Bermuda and then we'll go from there and watch the track. Here's the big picture, and I want to show you the next system. This here is Lee, and you see it on the heading it is now. Uh, keeps all that action over water, but as I mentioned, once it slows down, look at here as we get into Tuesday. Again, we're not making, this is Saturday now, we're not making up a whole lot of ground. Here's Bermuda, so it really, really slows down. 
So that's when, uh, as a meteorologist, been doing this for decades, I'm always like, okay, uh, are there going to be any changes? And there is that possibility of some changes, so I'll be watching that. And then eventually, once we get into Tuesday, that's when we should see more of that lift to the north. Here's Bermuda. And by the time we get in, remember, this one, the American model is faster than the European model. That puts some tropical storm conditions near Bermuda as we work our way into later on Thursday, Thursday night, and Friday. So if you want to make some of the uh, preps, you want to do so in advance of this time frame. Of course, it may be slower at the European model. But this right here, a front picks it up. Now, the American model being sooner uh, just kind of lifts this up anywhere from New England back through the Atlantic region of uh, Canada. So still a wait and see down the road. Can't dive into impacts here because uh, it could be over here, could be here. So I'll be watching that closely. Uh, there's Margo. Again, Margo uh, stays out to sea, but this also catching your eye. So let me stop it here. We'll keep an eye on what happens up here, watching over toward Newfoundland, over toward Nova Scotia, and then another system trying to develop. That is normal for this time of year. So in the Caribbean, I'm watching that very carefully. Clearly, I'm talking about it now. Now, here's the deal with this system. This is, this is a week out. So if this gets close to the Caribbean, that would be about a week and a half from now or two weeks from now. Uh, but with that said, the American model is showing a system that could be pretty strong. The European model is not showing that at all. So this is a tropical disturbance, tropical wave that's uh, on the coast of Africa right now. So a lot of time to watch it, but I'm watching that. So here with the European model, now what's going on right now, this area of high pressure, I talk about that being like a fence, that's locked in. So you've got Margo and you've got Lee sitting right there. Can't go anywhere really in the short term because high pressure is acting like a barrier. It's acting like a wall. Now, what's gonna help make its turn? It's gonna be these fronts or a trough in the United States. So let me go forward. This is taking you through the weekend and once again, moving very, very slow, even slower than what the American model has. The European model has this restrengthened a little bit and then going out in time, you could see uh, Margo there in this here. This is Lee and what I'm watching is gonna be these fronts back here. These fronts back here are what is going to try to drive it up. Now, this front, if it comes in a little bit sooner, that's good news for the United States, for example. That also acts as a barrier or fence, but this front will eventually grab this and drive it to the north. So this has been the same thinking over, I was checking back in my prior videos, uh, over the last six to seven videos that I've been doing, all on track uh, with that, with finding that from, there's Bermuda. This is by the time we get into Friday. So again, later, Friday and Saturday, that would bring some tropical storm impacts to Bermuda, but still a healthy hurricane. So any shift a little bit closer to Bermuda, that could bring in some hurricane impacts. And then what happens from here, uh, still tough to tell because it's so dynamic. Things are kind of uh, changing up here at higher latitudes a little bit quicker. The European model is a better solution, hopefully keeping this to the south of parts of the Atlantic region of Canada. What I'll be watching there will be this area of high pressure right here. Again, those are blockers. So if this is strong, that that could drive this either into New England or the Atlantic region of Canada. If it's weak, that could allow a little escape route from it. And another front again watching this, hopefully this is a little bit quicker, a little bit stronger to try to kick things away. But also as you look out in time, look down here, as I mentioned, that next tropical system that the American model is really picking up on, the European model is, is not. So there's definitely a difference in what's going on out there longer term. But I do expect more systems, more systems to approach us in the Caribbean as we go forward. That's all kind of normal for this time of year. Looking at the winds, the core of the winds staying to the north of the northeastern sections of the Caribbean. Now, once we get to Tuesday though, when this stalls, the wind field expand. So Turks and Caicos, Southern Bahamas, we could get some gustier winds. Of course, the seas are a mess, life-threatening seas. It should restrain it a little bit. Uh, intensity is very difficult to uh, forecast, but it should restrengthen. but the wind field expands. So once this stalls, if this wobbles a little bit closer, that could bring some gustier winds to the Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. I'm watching that. And then this will lift up to the north. This here, the American model in showing the very strong winds, the core just, just off to the way too close or comfort just off to the west of Bermuda. It'll be a, a matter of uh, kilometers uh, just how much in the way of impacts we get down the road as we work our way into late week for Bermuda. So the names again, we have Lee and Margo out there. Nigel, that new system does develop in the Atlantic. The next name on the list is Nigel Ophelia. 
on the list after that. So let me get a little bit closer. Here's a look, by the way, some heavier rain. Panama, we'll see some of that inching into uh, Costa Rica. I've been noting some near El Salvador, Guatemala, especially right along the uh, coast right now. Spotty shower storm as we go throughout the day. This out here is Hova. That was a major category five hurricane that as expected has been falling apart out there. Eastern Pacific has been a little bit quieter. So let me take you over the next two days. There is Lee watching that. Yes, some of the rain bands, the uh, kind of far reaches of those rain bands will try to find us. You get these feeder bands wrapping around. So anywhere from St. Lucia, Barbados, uh, Martinique, Guadalupe, Dominica, some of those rain bands could clip us by. Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts, Nevis, uh, St. Martin, St. Bart, they're not attached uh, to the core of the system, but yeah, there's a chance of that. But over towards Central America and Costa Rica, Panama, that's where we have the higher chance of rain the next couple days. And then we'll monitor the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. This is by the time we get into late Monday. So I wanna get into the forecast and recap what I'm looking long-term. Puerto Rico, isolated showers and storms as we go throughout the day. Heat advisory, super hot, super hot as well. US and British Virgin Islands, isolated shower storm, Antigua and Barbuda. Watching those feeder bands though, some of us are going to get a few down at times, very hard to pinpoint. 30 to 40% chance in Anguilla. Seas are a mess. Isolated showers and storms. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. St. Martin, Seba, Stacia. I'll be watching those feeder bands. Otherwise, we're going to be on the dry side. Trinidad and Tobago, not a lot. It has been so, so hot across uh, Trinidad. As we get into the upcoming week, though, I'm going to keep a close eye on that system that may try to develop out there in the Atlantic. Very limited rain chance today in Grenada. 20% chance in Barbados. Could see one of those feeder bands into Lee trying to scoop by. Same thing in St. Lucia, 20 to 30% chance through this weekend. Very isolated chance of a shower or storm, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 30 to 40% chance in Jamaica as we go over the next few days. Belize, we have not had a lot of rain in most spots. A few spots have had rain. It's been isolated. We definitely need to get more at this point. Yucatan of Mexico, same thing, rain chance 30%, 20 to 30% chance in through the uh, Cayman Islands all the way through the weekend. 40% chance in the Bahamas, all eyes watching Lee as that will eventually slow down and stall. Turks and Caicos, same thing, watching that carefully. Isolated pop-up shower storm today in Haiti. Dominican Republic, about a 40% chance for today. Aruba, super dry, and on top of that, super hot. And there's still some areas of dust around. I've been watching that parts of Curacao. Keep me posted in the comments. Guadalupe, about a 30% chance of a shower passing by as we work our way into Dominica. Rain chance 30%, 20 to 30% chance as we get into Martinique. And that rain chance a little higher with isolated areas of flooding. Costa Rica, and as we swing back through Panama, we're gonna see a higher chance of rain. Some of that could creep back toward Nicaragua. Isolated shower storm, northern Venezuela. Not a lot of action in Guyana. Rain chance 20%, holding at 20% as we work our way into Suriname. Now, we get a look at the bigger picture again. Wind shear, which is a good thing, as I mentioned, impacting Lee in the short term. But then Lee slows and then it will turn. What it does will be key what happens kind of down the road with this. Bermuda watching closely, eastern Canada in the northeastern uh, sections of the United States. And as you can tell, I am watching that next strong tropical wave coming off. Models are split on development, but this time of year, if it does try to develop, most likely it would become a hurricane. Uh, so I'll be watching that through the open waters of the Atlantic, marching a little bit closer to the Caribbean. Peak of the season tomorrow, hurricane season. Long way to go. Ends on November 30th. Just take it storm by storm. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for being part of this weather community. It is for you. This is your weather community, your message board. Uh, leave your name or leave your location and uh, what you got going on for weather. And so that just kind of gives us all a good feel of what's going on. So again, thank you and I hope you have a good rest of your day.